I was asked a couple of days ago if I'd be willing to record a message to Occupy Wall Street about Occupy Wall Street from somebody who's been very successful in the world of business. As many of you know, my name is Ronaldo Brutico. I'm president and founder of the World Business Academy. And one of the reasons I agreed to do this is because I am so grateful, and I believe all of the business community should be as well, I am so grateful for Occupy Wall Street. What they have done is return the conversation to the issues that we need to discuss. They've returned the conversation to what's really important in this country and frankly for this economy. So many of the people in the business community, you should know, are completely aware that what's gone on in the financial sector has been crazy. And that it needs to be different is also clear. But more important than that, I think the fundamental issue that Occupy Wall Street is about, it's about economic justice within the envelope of social justice. So it's not just about Wall Street. And frankly, it's not just about business. What it's about is the fact that we've decimated the middle class in America, and this economy doesn't work well when you do. So it's time for us to look at our priorities. And I would say on behalf of the business community, and frankly on behalf of the one percenters, of which I am one, I am grateful that Occupy Wall Street is asking us to look at how do we fix the economy, which in fact will benefit us all. It'll benefit the one percenters, it'll definitely benefit the business community. Why? Because the U.S. economy, and I would argue the economy of the Western democracies, does not work without a vibrant middle class. We need to make it possible again in the United States of America and ultimately in other countries around the world where this isn't true, and in many countries in Europe it is true, where you can go through college and not come out deeply in debt. Where you can go through that college no matter who your parents were, if you have the ability to get there. And the college education you'll get will be second to none. We need to make it possible again for people to feel reasonably safe that the next generation will have it as good or better than their generation. We need to make it safe to own houses, to invest in stock markets that aren't gambling in instruments. We need to be able to feel safe again, that we can create a society like we did after World War II, built on an, in, an enlightened egalitarianism. The sense that when we all did better, we all do better. So it's time now to drop the aristocratic pretensions that a few of us should be allowed to fly around in jets, a few of us should be up above the atmosphere of the pain and the sorrow and the toil going on in the middle and lower classes in America and other Western democracies. It's time for us to stop the silly conversation about deficits because they don't matter at this stage. Jobs do. And it's time for us to begin once again to join hands and join hearts and realize that what we do for each other, in fact, we do for ourselves. You know, as it was said a long time ago by the poet John Donne, do not ask for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. In the U.S. and Western democracies' economies, the middle class being driven to the point of fear, concern, and at this point I would say a pervasive sense of foreboding. To that middle class, it's time to say, we get it. The bell's tolling for us too. We will all be better off. And I'll leave you with just this one last thought. The highest ratio of deficit ever to GNP in the history of the United States was recorded in 1946. It was so high that no one could conceive of how we'd ever pay the debt off. And what happened from 1946 to 1966 is we experienced the greatest economic miracle of all time. In the process of doing it, the debt shrank as a percentage of GNP without anybody having to do anything at all except enjoy the fruits of a society that actually was equal and fair. It's time for us to return to that society again, and when we do, we'll create wealth at every level that we've never ever seen before. And we'll find that all the choices that we thought were trade-offs really aren't. Because at the end of the day, we do not live in a, an economy of scarcity where it hurts me to help you. We live in an economy of abundance where the better you do, the better I do. And at this point, I'm all for all of us doing better. Thanks very much for listening, and I wish you all the best of luck on Wall Street and all the other Occupy Wall Street movements around the globe. Thank you.